Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we'll be talking about, briefly, about the system that occurred across the Northeast, how much snow it dropped. We'll be also going over the potential for a pretty significant system across the Midwest in uh, Thursday into Friday. And then potentially another system. So in general, uh, two snowstorms that we're watching pretty closely, and we'll just have to monitor them, and we'll talk about them in today's video. A lot of data, a lot of forecast changes. Um, if you guys like these videos, consider subscribing. If you uh, like it at any point, consider liking the video. That also helps out, clicking the thumbs up button. Regardless, if you have a comment, concern, leave it down below. Let's get into this video. Let's start off by looking at the United States radar and portions of southern Canada. <laughs> Notice that we have the system pulling away, right? It is obviously a bit weaker in terms of precipitation rates across the United States. Still some pretty good rates occurring across inland portions in the northeast into upstate New York, southern Canada, Ottawa potentially. Getting in on some of that snowfall. Um, notice that this was the last six hours. You can see Maine got quite a good hit today. Uh, it was started obviously during the night. Notice we do still have some precip kind of circling in. A lot of uh, coastal areas of Maine right there kind of transitioned over to rain. And that was the case with Boston. For example, <laughs> yesterday, Boston saw around 2 to 3 inches. But just outside, 10 to 15 miles saw up to a foot, a foot and a half of snow. Um, so that, you know, that's an example of unpredictability. Notice New York City, right, got quite a bit and it's still slightly snowing and pushing into southern Canada. Total snowfall amounts from this whole system out of the last 72 hours, including the Midwest, are rather impressive. And if you're to take a look at it and let them load in, notice that we have a lot of oranges, a lot of yellows. Anywhere you see the lightest shade of yellow, that's 6 inches plus. Anywhere you see that little bit more orange color, that's 8 inches plus. And anywhere you see that orange color that dark orange is 12 inches plus and then the red is uh, 18 so foot and a half we did get some reports of almost uh, three feet mount arlington uh, new jersey 35.1 angels pennsylvania 35 uh, Lake uh, Lakeville, Pennsylvania, 34. Um, in terms of New York City, I think they got in right around uh, right around 17, 18 inches, a foot and a half. I'm not exactly sure. It did vary quite a bit. And I noticed into Ohio, there were some uh, amounts that were reaching towards the 6 plus, uh, plus range. Kentucky, Tennessee, um, decent amounts of snow, uh, nothing too extraordinary. Notice... That's, um, again, the Independence, Virginia, that's an error. 36 inches did not fall there. They tried putting in 3.6. So the highest amount was 35.5 in Mount Arlington. Or um, we just, I think, right there, Nazareth, Pennsylvania, actually, 35 point. Yeah, okay, sorry, 35.5 is Nazareth, 35.1 is Mount Arlington. Notice that uh, a lot, again, look at that Boston. You would see that, oh, look, very high amounts right on the coast. Winchester, Chelsea. 2.8 um very very uh sharp sharp cut off to say the least notice i'm having trouble loading this map on here because of how many reports there are um notice that there are some blue reports those are generally older reports um allentown got a ton of snow pretty much the center of the axis of heaviest snow you can see 28 inches 25 philadelphia around 6 to 8 inches which was as predicted um there were some amounts reaching a bit over 8 so maybe a bit less than expected overall a uh, pretty good job though with that harrisburg got a decent amount state college altoona hartford uh most of connecticut got over a foot the coastal areas may got have gotten a bit less albany not a bad event for you up to a foot of snow now look at that um, really, Boston did not see much, but right outside into the suburbs, there was a ton of snow. Providence got around, oh, say, three inches as of last check, and now it's moving into Maine, obviously. So, very good amounts, very heavy snow, a large system, possibly the biggest one for the northeast of the season. Um, well, thus far, for sure, whether or not it's the biggest one of the entire year, we'll just have to wait and see. So, let's begin talking about this. First off, let's take a look at the National Weather Service. We still do have some watchers and advisories and warnings. We're going to ignore that for now. You know, we've talked about that for many days. Let's take a look at Wisconsin. Northeastern Wisconsin is the first area that got a winter storm watch issued. Snow potential. Notice that in terms of 4 inches or, sorry, 6 inches plus is a 50-60% chance. By the looks of it, this system is uh, kind of strong and the models may be underestimating some of its strength. I would say that 6 inches plus is a very, very good chance for much of the Green Bay area. So again, you haven't really seen any big systems so far. 6 inches seems like a pretty good bet. Um, the official winter storm watch is 4 to 8 as of now. Um, notice uh, Minneapolis, for example, is also on a cutoff, potentially seeing some snow, but you can see it's definitely going to be favoring the south 
eastern portions, though the probability of two or more is at medium. Um, notice winds will also be just absolutely uh, howling, and I don't think they will issue a, win a blizzard warning, blizzard watches. Um, but beside the snow, the coldest air of the season is expected this weekend, and uh, it's going to be cold. That's just one way to put it. Notice um, the northwest have some advisories, uh, mainly for some light snow, maybe some mixed precipitation. In terms of light freezing rain, right, uh, you can see, and snowfall. Let's take a look at Glasgow, um, Montana, and see how it's snow there. Predicting, let's see here. Um, yeah, see this one? Not that much. Less than half an inch. Up to half an inch again that's mostly going to be the advisory for that wintry mix which could cause slippery conditions um sierra nevada have some warnings and now into the west all right let's start talking about this first off let's take a look at the gfs model starting at hour six uh this model just came in notice we have a large system pulling away right our big system notice a system moves in today across the west it's already moving in and it continues to do so wednesday this is how it looks like as of 12 a.m. tomorrow, or sorry, Wednesday, or Thursday morning, Central Standard Time, 12 a.m. Notice, very weak, not too impressive. We do have some pretty strong southerly winds, which will warm a lot of these areas up, which is why cities like Chicago, Milwaukee, um, even portions of northern Indiana, southern Michigan may be on the cusp of seeing kind of a mix, rain, snow. More rain potentially than <clears throat> than snow, according to, say, the models like the GFS. Notice, if we were to take a look at this, what it does is it shows that snow, right, across the Quad Cities, for example, Des Moines, um, into southern Wisconsin, Green Bay, obviously, the UP, into maybe even Kansas City picking up some snow. Notice what it does. It, keep, it strengthens the system quite a bit, enough where it's dragging enough uh, warm air from the south that transitions Chicago, Indiana, southern Michigan, potentially, into some um, rain, and it goes pretty far to the north again you can see it does transition it back over to snow across illinois and let's say even indiana but up here it says solidly snow now the system won't be dropping ridiculous amounts of snow but the winds will be um very very sharp i mean right there at this point uh, late late thursday early friday morning the winds off the lake could be rather significant, potentially gusting up to 40, if not 50 miles per hour. I mean, just looking at the isobar measurement right there. And notice that it moves off. The lakes are obviously turned on to the max. You can see lake enhancement is occurring off of Lake Michigan, the UP as well. A lake here on Lake Ontario. Notice for the northeast, uh, mainly a rain event, a bit of snow potentially into Tennessee. Kentucky doesn't look too significant, to be honest. And the GFS likes to underestimate this precipitation. I don't think there will be a lot of precipitation to transition over to snow with this cold front. The cold air will be fast and will be strong, but I don't think this cold front will be as moisture saturated as uh, the GFS shows. Regardless, it takes it out, right? And like you can see, it still drops snow into southern Canada, northern Maine, um, Quebec, Ottawa, Montreal. Toronto could pick up a bit, though again, the lakes may do a bit of warming for you. Notice lake effect after that is still on. We have a huge Arctic air mass. And this is the second system we have to watch for. You can see the GFS doesn't show anything big. Um, it shows a big system, but off the coast, not really much impacts. Um, many models show this onshore, and many models show significant impacts. So anywhere I would say east of even, you know, Minnesota, Iowa, including Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, just be watchful for this system. Um, there's a lot of models showing a really significant storm out of this. And even once this system passes... Right, so we already had two snowstorms, and this is hour 114, um, hour 132 by the time it's out of here. Again, assuming that it takes a, a similar timing track, even if it's further inland or out into the ocean. Notice, a lot of these small little clippers kind of just going through. I mean, the air will be very cold. You can see um, it's going to be below average, though pretty warm to the south. It could be a pretty sharp contrast, not good for severe weather. Notice even some snow potentially across uh, the south, some ice, right? And the pattern remains active well well into February and potentially into March. Notice another <laughs> clipper right there beginning to be followed by another Arctic air mass. I do want to emphasize a bit on the cold air. I usually don't go over the cold air the past few videos. I haven't. I do want to talk about the cold air a bit in today's video because of, or just show you right now because of how cold it will be. Notice these are anomalies, so from average, obviously February is a warming month, a lot of locations are starting to warm up for spring. Notice um, some anomalies getting there way, way below 20 degrees Celsius in terms of below average across, say, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, Iowa, and as soon as you think that would push away, look at that, it stays, and it stays for a long time, and it presses well into the southern United States. 
and then we have more colder. So it looks pretty repetitive, the pattern, and uh, this colder looks barbaric. Thankfully, it's not occurring in, say, late uh, January. It's going to be kind of the February time frame. So the cold air, despite how cold it will be, will be a bit moderated by the fact that, you know, the northern hemisphere is starting to warm. Regardless, I mean, look at those temperatures. They won't feel like spring whatsoever across these locations. Even, you know, across the south, there could be several days that uh, freezing temperatures reach well beyond the Gulf Coast um, into the ocean. All right, so let's take a look at the total snowfall. I know you, a lot of you are wanting to see the total snowfall. I did go on a tangent a bit with the cold air because that's, a, again, a very important piece behind this first system and really that, that second one into the weekend. You know, the cold air will come spilling in and that will quickly become the priority. The snow will get cleaned up and the cold air will stay. Notice, um, in terms of snowfall from the GFS, notice showing up to one foot across Wisconsin into the UP. I think that could be even higher, especially if the snow to liquid ratio will be a bit higher. Um, I don't think it will be anything above like a 16. It won't be a dry snow, but it probably will be at least a normal snow, not really a wet snow. And a normal snow is anything 10 to 16 within that range of ratios. Anything below is considered a wet snowfall. Um, again, it shows around 3 to 5 inches across northern Illinois. Another one area, you know, that will be very, very hard to see how much snow will fall. There's a lot of models kind of going around showing different things. If the system ends up being very strong and powerful, then probably northern Illinois, northern Indiana will transition over to rain as it will have a lot of power to put, pump warm air in. If it remains a bit weaker, it could definitely remain snow for Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. But also, if it's a stronger system, it will definitely drop more snow further to the north. So that's the GFS. Let me show you the Canadian model. The Canadian is quite a bit um, different. It shows snow further to the south, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana. I do want to say that whatever the Canadian is, however you view it, it was one of the few models that did show a uh, a cutoff across uh, Massachusetts and into uh, Providence, Cape Cod, those areas. And, you know, the other models showed all snow for those locations. And this model showed a rain snow event. So this model definitely did a pretty good job with that nor'easter side of the system. Now for the Midwest part of that storm, it did a bit worse. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. Again, you can see it shows high amounts uh, further widespread. Des Moines, you can see Minnesota. Minneapolis doesn't really pick up much. Green Bay still up to 6 inches, a bit less than, say, the GFS, but further towards the south. And then um, notice that in a long range, it does show additional chances of snow. Um... Just to show you the Canadian in terms of its layout of the storm, it's the same, really, relatively the same. It keeps it weaker. You can see 995, 990. The winds are going to be strong, but not nearly as strong as with the GFS. And you can see that results in a broad area of snow. Not really even getting close to the uh, Chicago area or northern Indiana. We'll have to see. Again, this may be a bit of a obsolete scenario, but uh, it is supported by uh, models. And it shows more activity, obviously, in the future. Let's take a look at some uh, other models. The European, a very good model, right? It did a fabulous job across the Midwest with this system. Relatively good job with the Northeast part of the system, this past one. Let's take a look at what it shows with this storm. Notice, it takes it out, right, very weak across the West, through the mountains, into the plains. Notice some snow across eastern Nebraska, Iowa. And it does show quite a bit of rain mixing into northern Illinois, even southern Wisconsin with this scenario. You can see that it... Shows a little bit of mixing, a bit of ice, and then at the back side, a bit of snow. Um, more of a GFS scenario to uh, for sure, but it still um, uh, has its differences. The track is a bit further to the west and north, so it's not really uh, optimal for lake effect snow production up until it passes afterwards, which obviously there will be lake effect. It's just the GFS turns it on a bit earlier. Notice it does have a very strong band of snow out ahead of it. So Michigan, Detroit, into Toronto could pick up a two to three inches and then transition over to some rain and wintry mix. Notice the northeast gets a quick swap of rain or snow depending on where you live. Coastal areas, more rain. Uh, inland areas, more snow. And notice it, it moves away. And here is one of the models like the European advertises for this very large system. If you recall, the GFS does nothing with this. Canadian does show a bit of snow. And then the European shows a monster extending all the way from Wisconsin, Illinois with the lighter amounts to the Northeast, potentially getting hammered again with this time potentially Boston actually getting some snowfall. Um, and after that, you know, the pattern doesn't really end. We have another snow chance and a couple smaller ones to the north and more to the south. Let's take a look at the total snowfall so you can see how much the European is advertising. Notice that through this weekend, uh, so excluding the second system, the first one drops decent amounts for, say, Iowa and Omaha, two to three. Northern central Iowa with this, she sees four to five. Green Bay, eight, you know, nine to ten inches, potentially getting 
towards a foot across the UP, right? 100% of the UP. Um, notice the lake effect does help across Michigan. Northern Illinois seeing a sharp cutoff between 1 to 2 and, you know, 3, 4, 5 to the north even more. Um, southern Wisconsin seeing 5 to 6. And the northeast seeing those amounts. And you can see with that coastal system in the northeast next weekend, or uh, after ne next weekend into Saturday, more of Sunday to Monday, see more snow across similar areas. So definitely interesting. And in the long range, even more snow. So that's the European. It has been jumping around quite a bit, so it's uh, not hasn't been as good. And honestly, a lot of the models have been kind of good with this Midwest system. And it's tough to say which one is the best uh, has the best handle in it. At this point, I would say maybe the European. But I wouldn't disregard a scenario like the Canadian where the rain snow line could shift a bit further to the south. Regarding the United Kingdom meteorological model, let's take a look at this. Notice that it does show a similar scenario to, say, the GFS or the or the European, bringing the snow further to the north. Though it does keep the heaviest just west of Green Bay. And I notice in a longer range, it does start showing that system across the northeast. But it's more heavy with the snow across the Midwest and northeast doesn't do much with it. So that's the UK map, but here's where things start splitting up. You know, if the high-risk models were agreeing with the long-range models, that would be awesome. That would be quick and easy, um, saying, you know, where the heaviest snow will fall. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So the NAM is still relatively in better agreement with the other models. But for example, look at that. It shows much more across Minneapolis rather than, uh, say, into Green Bay. I mean, it does show decent amounts of the Green Bay. I should say it just extends the snow into Minneapolis. Northern Illinois puts Chicago into five six inches. Same with Northern Indiana, two to three four inches. Southern Wisconsin, a bit of snow. That's already quite a bit different. Though for the northern locations, it's generally the same. Now let's take a look at another model, like the RDPS, the Canadian version of a high res. And obviously, it's going to be leaning towards what the Canadian is showing. You can see not much for the north in terms of comparing to say the European. Still up to six inches across Green Bay, especially if you were to turn on the Kuchera, those amounts up there will become a bit more fluffy. But to the south, it shows even into central Illinois, central Indiana, you know, four to five inches. Much, much different and a huge range compared to, say, some of the global models. So really nothing comforting. I would show you the GFS parallel. Unfortunately, it has been pooped. It hasn't been showing its latest um, model runs. Um... I can show you the 6 o'clock one, actually, though, from 6 o'clock in the morning. You can see it showed something. Sorry about that. The phone is ringing. It's a combination of, uh, with the GFS version 16 model run from 6 o'clock in the morning today. It's a combination of kind of the GFS, European, and Canadian, but really leaning towards the Canadian, or towards the GFS and European. It did show a pretty significant system for the weekend, one of the models that did advertise that. And the GFS parallel, again, is a very reliable model, except... It's the latest information is out of date. All right, um, taking a look, quick look at the RAP, a very high res model. It goes out to 50, 50 some hours, and it does uh, show snow further to the south into Illinois, Indiana, versus the global models that show it further to the north. So definitely another thing you can see more snow into Minneapolis, into Duluth. So you know these high res sometimes do end up proving a point and if you were to take a look at the her another competing high res with the with the rap is um also starting to favor some snow further to the south while this isn't looking too impressive it's because the system hasn't gone through and at hour 48 it looks like this but still introduces a bit more rain or see it started off as rain and it introduces more snow than say the operational models you can see close call but uh, you know a bit more snow so we'll have to see uh, you know, for the Chicago area, close call, northern Indiana, quad cities further to the north, I would say it's more confident with the heavy snow. Into Michigan as well. Southern Canada, I did show you. Let's just take a look at the RDPS and what it shows in terms of total snowfall. Um, again, this is a scenario that's a bit further to the south leaning, so you can see nothing too significant, but some later amounts are possible. Especially with the Kuchera, I'm assuming it would be a bit higher. Um, quickly, I know this video is long, but I do want to look at the model viewer. So the, this is the National Weather Service forecast and what they think as of right now and their forecast, what they're calling for. Northern Illinois, you can see that earlier on in the day in Northern Indiana, they did extend it further to the south. Now they have kind of shot that back up um, to the north. Uh, they did increase it across the UP, you know, up to, up to a foot, if not more. And again, it's still relatively far out, 48, 50 hours. That's not too close in time. And we'll just have to wait and see what they do with that. Um, so that's through 72 hours. I could show you the 
the see the ensembles that are disagreeing and agreeing and let me actually show you the gfs ensembles come on 31 members let's take a look at the great lakes as that's where the system will be centered across more or less so again small icons i do apologize but take a look at this through uh this there's the saturday before that with that second potential system you can see that there is quite a bit of variance some show it um pretty uniform to others but there are some differences and look at that that's completely different from say something like this that shows a very strong system and something like uh you know this which shows a much weaker system some bring it further to the south and west some further east and northeast so interesting We'll have to keep an eye on for this and see how these a trend. If you were to take a look at the set of ensembles from noon, um, there have been quite a bit of adjustments, and the main trend has been kind of to keep the storm a bit stronger. But really, I mean, I can't even notice a pattern to be honest. Some models just went further to the south, some went back further to the north with that snow rain snow line, and some had access further across Green Bay, some were further to the west. And regarding the European ensembles, um, let me quickly show you. EPS members, United States, five days snowfall. Take a look at this. Um, next five days, right? So it might include some traces of that second system starting to develop, which we can see right there. Um, but this is generally through the 7th of February, which I don't know what day that will be. Probably, probably Saturday or Sunday. Um, I don't have a calendar pulled up here with me. But notice that it does vary quite a bit. And this is five days snowfall. And you can see that some show a more strong system, some show a weaker system across the Midwest. Again, this is from that first system that's still going on right now. And then notice uh, some bring it further to the south. This, I'm assuming, is, again, with that secondary system starting to develop. Um, but again, you can see the axis of heavy snow it jumps around. I mean, look at this model compared to this model or even that model. A lot of differences. Oh, let's go back. And, you know, we'll just have to see how this unfolds. And I would not be surprised to see, you know, an underperforming storm out of this or a un or a overperformer out of this. And uh, again, sorry about that. Keep going over there. So again, uh, very, very tricky to see what actually happens. But we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for watching. Uh, consider subscribing. Consider liking the video. Again, very cold air. Lots of snow. If I were to look at the 15 day snowfall outlook, it, it looks snowy. And all models almost advertise that. Some show, you know, ridiculous amounts of snow. Even some hint it towards the south. Alright, thank you for watching. See ya.